the gaps. Leading our prayer today, inshallah, will be Sheikh Fadila to Sheikh Al Saeed Ghazadeen, Director of Al Azhar Academy of Canada. Uh, and before that, inshallah, Sheikh Muhammad Zahid Abu Ghudda will be giving us a quick reminder on uh, the the fiqh, a prayer of Eid, how to conduct the prayer. After the prayer, inshallah, there will be a khutbah also presented by Shaykh Muhammad Zahid Abu Ghudda. So if you can please join me on stage. Eid prayer has no iqamah, no sunnah before it or after it. And please stay and listen to the sermon after our Imam will give the prayers. And we have guests also, uh, politicians, candidates for the mayor of Toronto. Please also wait till they give their speeches. Jazakumullah khairan. We will start right away. In the first rak'ah, the Imam will make seven takbirat before recitation. In the second rak'ah, the Imam will make five takbirat before recitation. Keep that in mind. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamdulillahi Ahmaduh. ونستعين به ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يطلب فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أوصيكم عباد الله وإياه بتقوى الله وأحبكم على طاعته وأنهاكم عن مخالفته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Dear brothers and sisters, at the conclusion of Ramadan, we need to review what we have achieved on an individual level, on the community level, and on the Muslims all over the world level. This is very important. Because the Prophet وسلم, one time was on his member, on his pulpit. And when he went up one step, he said, Ameen. And then he went another step and he said, Ameen. And went up a third step and he said, Ameen. And the companions asked him, What are you saying? And he said, Jibreel came to me. And he said, Ba'uda man adraka Ramadan falam yufarla. He is far off. He who attained Ramadan, who went through Ramadan, but didn't attain forgiveness. On the second time, Jibreel said to me, Ba'uda man dhukirta indahu falam yusalli alayhi. He is far off. He or she, when your name is mentioned, they don't say Salah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the third time, Jibreel said, Ba'uda, man adrak al kibar walidayhi, aw ahadahuma, falam yudkhidah al jannah. He is far off. He who has old age parents, or one of them, and he was not able to get into paradise, taking care of them. So at the end of Ramadan, we need to ask ourselves, did we attain forgiveness? Did we achieve what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith? Many of us went through Ramadan with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a difficult Ramadan, 17 hours of fasting, no water, no drink, but Alhamdulillah, we have made it. And the blessings of the month will remain with us for the rest of the year. At the same time, beside the rituals of fasting, we need to look at the spirit of fasting to see did we attain the spirit of fasting. 
the spirit of fasting is what the Prophet ﷺ told us about. Good manners, being always generous. And he told us, if someone came to you and he cursed you, he vilified you, what do you say to him or her? Inni sa'im. I am fasting. I am not going to involve in all of this. I am at a higher level of manners. So this is the spirit of Ramadan. The spirit of Ramadan is to give the needy and the poor. You have been without food or drink by your own choice. But there are many brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity. They are not eating because they cannot afford food. They are not drinking because there is no clean water for them. The spirit of Ramadan means you share with them some, a tiny fraction of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you. And this is why before coming to the prayers, you give sadaqatul fitr. Just a tiny amount of money to show your brothers and sisters that you want them to join you in the happiness of Eid. You want them to share with you some of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of us give their zakah in the month of Ramadan. Again, to show the needy and the poor that your pain is my pain. Your hunger is my hunger. And this is the least we can do for our brothers and sisters. We have been near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. Praying taraweeh at the mosque, going to the mosque every day, reciting the Quran. This is a great achievement that we need to maintain beyond the month of Ramadan. And as such, we will attain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the Muslim community level in this country, again, what have we achieved through the month of Ramadan? We have been to the mosque almost every day during the month of Ramadan. And the mosque became the focus of our life. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became the focus of our life. Fasting, reciting the Quran, praying, giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the true achievement as a community. We have won since of brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam. We all together are one body, as the Prophet وسلم, described us. And we have been taking care of the needy and the poor. As a community, we should not have anyone in need by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our sadaqa, our zakah, our assistance should bring happiness and smiles to everyone in the Muslim community and beyond. And we must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings. And this is why we are praying an additional prayer, a sixth prayer today. This prayer that we just went through is an additional gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings, for all his gifts. And let's all remember the words of the Quran when they spoke about Mecca with living in the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Allah say to them? Let them worship the Lord of this house who gave them when they were hungry, who gave them peace when they were scared and afraid. And this applies to all of us here. So let's be more thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the message of Ramadan. This is the spirit of Ramadan. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all achieve it and we all live with it for the month of Ramadan and beyond the month of Ramadan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Allahu Akbar.
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد and when at the end of Ramadan we look beyond our immediate community beyond our country we look and we see wounds in the body of the Muslims we see wounds in Gaza that is coming year after year a great prison where people are under siege for seven years and they will attain their freedom whether we like it or not whether we support them or not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their support and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports you then no one can but listen and heed the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have been under siege for seven years and all they are asking is to live in dignity to live as everyone lives to be able to travel abroad to be able to live with their families in peace but when your land is being taken away when we see settlements in the west bank hundreds and thousands of people living on occupied land this means that there is, will be no peace as long as the Palestinian lands are taken away against all international laws but no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support those who are the victims of great tragedy of this time beyond Palestine a gaping wound in Syria hundreds of thousands have died hundreds of thousands displaced and we look in Iraq lot of turmoil lot of bloodshed in Libya there are troubles everywhere we look we see troubles but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us inna ma'al usri yusra with the hardship and ease will come with the difficulty it will not continue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change it and this have led some people to make a theory which is a false theory ugly theory that the Muslims are not suitable for being governed under democracies they are not suitable for freedom they made this theory to demonize the Muslim race to demonize the Muslim woman and the Muslim people they want to tell you that your destiny is to live always under dictatorship this is not true at all this is a theory to facilitate dictatorship in Muslim countries and Muslim lands this is a way to facilitate the oppression of the Muslim people in their own lands and let's remember that our brothers in humanity went through similar difficulties the Arab Spring is still alive it is not the winter spring our brothers in humanity in Latin America in many countries Argentina Brazil many countries like that they went from military dictatorship into troubles and they today enjoy democracy they enjoy freedom they enjoy their own self-satisfaction their own government no interference when they were struggling for their freedom no one said they don't deserve it but there are people who dare to say Muslims do not deserve freedom Muslims do not deserve to be able to elect their own government and this is not true at all we are a human being as everyone else and we shall see freedom in Muslim countries we will be free of oppression free of corruption free of tyranny and we see the plan hiding from Muslim countries like Indonesia the largest Muslim country recently had presidential elections and they parted away with their past with their dark past for the first time they have elected a president who has nothing to do with the ruling elite before 
We see Malaysia making great progress. We see Muslim countries like Morocco moving towards stability and prosperity. We see Tunisia, so we see indeed among the clouds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the lightning to show us that there is a hope, that the light is coming, the freedom and the justice is coming. And by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next Eid, we will have so many glad tidings. This is the destiny of the Muslim Ummah. And we know that the struggle, the jihad, is something that you go from one phase to another. And we need to see, as we live in a free country, as we live in a country where you enjoy all your rights and freedoms, we want our brothers and sisters in every Muslim country to enjoy their rights and freedoms. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best ways in our lives. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers in Gaza. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers in Syria and Iraq, to help every oppressed on this earth, and to alleviate the suffering of the victims in the Muslim Ummah. Allahumma jma'na ala ma yudhim, wa hul baynana wa bayna ma'asim, wa ja'alna min al-mutahabin abim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذه أفت عزيز مقتدر اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا غائبا إلا إلى آله ودنته اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم عاف مبتلانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعل الجنة مثواهم ومثوانا يا أرحم الراحمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر وكل عام وأنتم بخير We have two guests who would candidate for the mayor of Toronto and this affects all of you more than anything else. I urge you to stay, listen to what they say, and to meet them after their speech.